The French riots have taught us one thing. Our world is descending into a state of uncertainty that we have not seen in over 80 years. Our world has shifted from a unipolar one where the United States is the supreme leader to a multipolar world where other systems and countries are now claiming their place in the global economy. The riots in France represent a plethora of issues for the French government, but on the macro level, they also represent another low point for the US world-led order. Countries around the world, most notably in the global south, are quickly losing confidence in Western governments. You might think I'm exaggerating, but let me share with you the confessions of one of America's most important foreign policy experts who just dropped a bombshell to the American public that will absolutely shock you. This is Richard Haas. He has served as the president of the Council on Foreign Relations for over 20 years. Why is this important? The Council of Foreign Relations has been the leading think tank shaping the foreign policy decisions of the United States government for the last 100 years. Earlier last week, Mr. Haas was interviewed by the New York Times and confessed the United States has become the most profound source of instability throughout the world. Throughout his entire career, Mr. Haas has been asked a simple question. What is the biggest threat to future world security? Is it countries like China, Russia, Iran, North Korea? Well, according to Mr. Haas, it's not. What about bigger problems? Issues like climate change or a global pandemic? Once again, it's not. Mr. Haas is now preparing to retire from the American think tank and now reveals the truth. The biggest threat to the future of the world security is the United States itself. Instead of being the most reliable anchor in a volatile world, the United States has become the most profound source of instability and an uncertain exemplar of democracy. Mr. Haas continues, Our domestic political situation is not only one that others don't want to emulate, but I also think that it's introduced a degree of unpredictability and a lack of reliability that's really poisonous. For America's ability to function successfully in the world, it makes it very hard for our friends to depend on us. Over the past few months, I've spent a tremendous amount of time asking one simple question. Why are countries throughout the global south choosing China over the United States? The results of my research are three YouTube videos I've made, breaking down exactly why South America, Africa, and the Middle East have all chosen China. Each of these videos have received over 1 million views on YouTube and are loaded with comments from locals living in these regions and confirming exactly what is going on in their respective home countries. Take this example. I'm a Zambian. And right now, as I'm typing this, the vice president of the USA is in my country, and you won't imagine her agenda for the trip. She's giving us lectures on democracy and LGBTQ. On the other hand, a few kilometers from my home, there are Chinese people building a massive hospital. I can confirm that China is the real deal for Africa. The BRICS alliance is the chief economic group that now challenges the US-led G7 alliance. Nearly 40% of the world's population lives in a BRICS country, and this chart says it all. While the G7 economies have been the leader for decades, there is now a changing of the guard. The 15th BRICS summit will take place in Johannesburg, South Africa from August 22nd to 24th this year. Currently, there are over 30 countries throughout the world who have expressed interest in attending and joining the BRICS alliance. In today's world, actions speak louder than words. And this is exactly why 50 of the 54 countries in Africa have become a member of China's Belt and Road Initiative. When a US politician visits Africa, they lecture African leaders on the dangers of working with China. Meanwhile, when Chinese politicians go to Africa, they leave the country with tangible assets that make a difference in local lives. But it goes much further than this. The EU has been blindly following the United States foreign policy decisions over the past 15 years, and quite frankly, it's led to the complete collapse of the European economy. In 2008, the EU's economy was 10% larger than that of the United States. But fast forward to today, and the United States is now 50% larger than the EU. Europe has become like Japan a country whose economy has essentially remained stagnant for over 30 years. While the US bombed Middle Eastern countries in our war on terror, Europe was forced to accept millions of refugees from Afghanistan, Iraq, 
Syria, and Somalia. The CIA has now come forward and admitted the war in Ukraine is, quote, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for the agency to bring down Putin, and this is the reason that the United States will never support a ceasefire and calls for peace in Ukraine. The US is locked in its next forever war, and once again, Europe is left paying the biggest cost. With Russian gas no longer available, the EU has become dependent on the US for energy, paying as much as four times the normal cost. The EU has been a dream partner for the United States, supporting everything in America's best interest. But in just 15 short years, the EU economy has rapidly declined and the long-term effects of being loyal to US hegemony is starting to break Europe. This is one of the most fascinating insights I've heard regarding Europe's migration problem. And it comes from David Goldman, a columnist for the Asian Times, who writes, with France burning, migration is the number one issue in Europe. China invests six times as much as the US in Africa. Europe can't stabilize economies that send migrants without China's help. That's enormous leverage for Beijing in Europe. Honestly, I can't believe this is not being discussed amongst EU politicians more. The only way to solve Europe's migration problem is to strengthen the local economies in Africa. Realistically, there are only two countries who could accomplish this, the United States and China. Unfortunately, the US only looks at Africa as a problem, while China looks at Africa as an opportunity. China is literally the only hope Europe has to solve this migration crisis, and it's exactly why Europe should maintain a good relationship with the US, but also align with China for its future. It's also why there have been numerous reports of Macron wanting to attend the upcoming BRICS meeting in South Africa. If France is invited to join BRICS, this could be a catalyst to helping relieve much of the tension in the country. But given the chaos and instability in France right now, who knows if Macron will even be able to lead the country. If European leaders are smart, they'll make foreign policy decisions that are in Europe's own best interest and not always blindly follow the United States. Unfortunately for Europe, it appears that their ability to think independently is already gone. You can't find a better article to describe how lost Europe is right now than this one. EU leaders pledge to de-risk from China and debate what this means. Imagine that. Your publicly elected official decides it's in your best interest to de-risk from China and then asks, what does that exactly mean? You just can't make up how ludicrous this situation has become. Meanwhile, if you look at the numbers and understand just how bad the EU economy is right now, you'll see entire industries, like the German auto industry, for example, are completely reliant on China for their future survival. While EU politicians are pleasing their American counterparts, it's high-level executives from German companies like Volkswagen and BASF who are doing the exact opposite. They're going to China and trying to build the relationships needed to survive this incredibly volatile time in Europe. Now, as I've outlined in today's video, the world is filled with the biggest question mark since World War II, but with every crisis, there is an opportunity. And if you're an investor, you need to pay attention to what I'm about to tell you. Atlas Salt is the sponsor of today's video. The ticker is R-E-M-R-F. And let me share with you why I think this company has incredible potential. To start, Atlas Salt is the only publicly traded pure salt play in all of North America right now. And with the chaos around the world, I'm personally researching and investing in raw materials and the mining companies who can extract these materials from the ground. It's why I'm bullish on gold, silver, lithium, and salt. These are the basic commodities that are needed for the future of our global economy. Well, Atlas Salt owns the largest undeveloped underground salt deposit currently at the feasibility stage in North America, the only one that could be put into production anytime soon. And it's strategically located in the heart of the robust Eastern North America de-icing salt market. You need to understand, this is a massive industry in North America. Over 25 million tons of salt is scattered on US roads annually every year for de-icing purposes, which equates to about 150 pounds of salt per US citizen per year. Like I said, this is an absolutely huge industry, and here is where things get very interesting. The US is experiencing a significant domestic production shortfall of high-grade rock salt, and for years has been relying on imports from Chile and North Africa, countries that have a risky resource policies and are now moving closer to China and the BRICS alliance. Like I said at the beginning of the video, gone are the days of a unipolar world where the United States is the sole leader of the world and countries will do whatever the United States wants. No, countries like Chile, which is one of the world's largest salt exporters, 
are not inclined to join the U.S. to stand against China. They have a different agenda on trade and other matters. This underscores how important it is for the United States to secure domestic supplies of critical minerals. It's literally a national security issue, and high-grade rock salt is critical to the smooth flow of commerce, as it keeps many of our roads and highways ice-free and safe for travel during winter. I've been doing my due diligence on Atlas Salt the past couple of weeks, and after studying the industry and researching more about the company, let me present to you five compelling reasons why I like this company. Number one, Atlas Salt is the only pure play publicly traded salt company in North America. They are only going after salt, and they are dedicated to addressing the domestic salt production deficit in North America. Number two, Atlas Salt owns 100% of North America's premier undeveloped salt project called Great Atlantic, strategically positioned in one of the most resource-friendly jurisdictions in the world, Newfoundland, Canada. Number three, there is no other salt project in North America that is nearing the final feasibility stage, which is the last technical hurdle before advancing towards production. Number four, Great Atlantic is one of the shallowest salt deposits in North America, making it one of the most accessible and potentially very profitable to put into production. Since the deposit is so shallow, the plan is to access this resource through inclined ramps instead of the more costly vertical shafts. And the final piece to the puzzle, and honestly, the most important thing I always look for in any new investment is a rock solid management team that most importantly has a proven track record of success. The president of Atlas Salt is Roland Howe, who is referred to as Mr. Salt. Roland earned his nickname by helping turn another project, the Godrich Mine in Southern Ontario, into the largest underground salt mine in the world during his tenure with the New York Stock Exchange listed Compass Materials. Mr. Howe went on to say this about the current Greater Atlantic project. In my 30 plus years in this industry, I have not come across a salt project as unique as Great Atlantic given its combination of size, shallowness, and logistical advantages. And finally, another reason I love this investment right now is the valuation. At the Salt is currently trading around $1 at the time of this recording and a market cap of around $72 million, which is down from its all-time high of $3.20 in August 2022 when rumors were flying around about potential suitors. The stock has corrected from a big move and may represent a great entry point for new investors with some potential fresh catalysts on the horizon, including the feasibility study. And quite frankly, this is exactly when you want to be investing in mining stocks. You want to invest now before the feasibility and drilling results are announced. But as always, and with any type of investment, please take the time to do your own due diligence and conduct your own research on this company. I personally think that the salt industry has a lot of potential. Both Cargill and Coke Industries, two of America's largest private companies, are invested heavily in this industry. They love the long-term, low beta cash flow salt mines are known for. And to help you do more research about Atlas Salt, I'm going to include the stock ticker, the website, and the investment deck in the description down below. Once again, do your own due diligence and research on any companies that you're investing in. And I want to thank you all for your continued support. And I look forward to seeing you all in our next video soon.